guys, Kristen here with Find Your Balance Dog Training. I wanted to share with you our waiting for food exercise with Duke. So before training, Duke had been controlling a lot of things that was feeding into his anxiety issues. And one of those things was he was controlling whether or not he ate. So this can be very stressful for dog owners because of course we want our dogs to eat. Um, and quite often, Duke would turn his nose up at his food. Um, he would refuse to eat. Maybe later in the day, he would be very demanding about wanting to eat, um, demanding extra things. So what we wanna do um, to resolve that kind of an issue is to put our dog on a very consistent feeding schedule. So what that looks like is a dog like Duke, for instance, he eats twice a day. So. The frequency of feeding will change depending on the dog. Um, younger dogs usually need to eat about three times a day. Um, older dogs, quite often, it's twice a day, but there are some dogs out there, guys, that prefer to eat once a day, and that's really common. And as long as they have no medical issues, no health issues, if that is the feeding style that works best for them, that makes them the healthiest and the most comfortable and they eat properly, um, that way, then that's how we go with some dogs. But Duke is doing really well with twice a day. So he eats a breakfast meal, he eats a supper meal. I measure his dog food out with a measuring cup so I get the exact amount. We want to make sure that we're not overfeeding our dogs so that our dogs are like excessively over full. Um, all the time because that will also throw off their, their feeding schedule. So make sure you calculate their amounts correctly and that's often very different than what's listed on the back of the dog food bags. So on the back of the dog food bags is typically way too much. So we want to actually um, measure the dog's weight and then calculate the, the, the correct amount of calories or measurements or whatever per dog. So when I go to feed Duke, I'm going to do the threshold exercise once again, meaning as I open up the crate door, if he starts to come out, I'm just going to close the door and I'm going to wait um, until I get a moment where Duke is waiting to wait on me calmly and politely. Then what I'm going to do is I just hold the food bowl up and I begin to lower it down. Nope. If he tries to dive in ahead of me, break. I simply pick the food bowl up, but I'm waiting for that moment when he's willing to wait for me to release him to eat the food, which you saw when I used the word break, and then I'm going to close the door, lock it and latch it, and completely walk away and leave the dog alone to enjoy his meals. So one of the things I mentioned in a few videos ago is that the crate is entirely the dog's own private space. Nobody should be bothering the dog while he's in there. Kids should never be allowed to be in the crate or around the crate or bothering the dog in any way. And it becomes especially important when we feed dogs. So feeding the dog in the crate is the safest place to feed the dog because it just removes the potential for conflict over food between dogs and other pets or dogs and kids or even dogs and adults. Um, Duke has some resource guarding issues which we've been working on so one of his protocols moving forward is that he will always be eating in his crate with the door locked and shut and then just left alone to enjoy his meals. So we're going to leave him to it and let, jo and let uh, Duke dig in and enjoy his food.